Hey you guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna be doing a video about indigo dyeing today. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you three folds on t-shirts. One linear fold, one geometric fold, and one circular fold. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to be starting out with three 100% cotton t-shirts. These have been pre-washed because I wanna get all of the dirt or grease or sizing off of them. And I am pre-washing them with something called Synthropol, which is also known as Dyer's Detergent. I'll put the link for that down in the description. But the reason I like to use Synthropol is that you can use it for all different types of dyeing. And it helps to prevent the dye from washing out of your piece and re-dyeing the white parts of your tie-dye. I'm also going to be giving my shirts a quick press to make sure that they don't have any really bad wrinkles. I'm not doing a perfect job since knits are really hard to iron, but I want it to be relatively smooth. So now I'm going to start with the first pattern, which is gonna be a linear pattern. I'm going to start by folding the shirt in half at the center front line, and I'm going to match up my sleeves and just smooth it out to get it as smooth and wrinkle free as I can. And then I'm going to start to accordion fold the shirt into thirds. And I'm going to start at the hemline and just establish that rectangle. And then I'm going to work my way up to the sleeves and the collar. Whenever I'm folding anything that isn't a square, I just like to pretend like it is a square and keep folding all the excess fabric up into the rectangle. So I'm gonna do that on both sides and then I'm gonna come in with some kitchen twine here and I'm going to tie a knot really, really tight right in the middle of those sleeves. So that's gonna kind of secure the whole thing. And once I get a nice double knot tied, I'm gonna to start to wrap my string around the whole rectangular piece really tight. I'm just taking my time and going as tightly as I can. This can be a little bit tricky. It looks uh, really easy, but it can be a little tricky to kind of tame that shirt. So I just recommend taking your time. Obviously I've sped this up because I edited it, but this can take a little while. So I like to go to one side and then work my way to the other side. And that way I can just make sure that everything is really, really tight. The tighter it is, the more resist you'll get. So of course, with any kind of vat dyeing, whatever you have exposed to the dye will get dyed and whatever is wrapped inside will stay white. So the tighter you wrap your pieces, the more resist you will get. I think it's nice to get kind of a 50-50 balance. So I'm going to wrap the whole thing a couple times and then once I get to that original knot where I left a little tail, I'm gonna clip my string and tie off the whole thing. And there it is, it's ready to go in the vat. Okay, now it's time for the geometric fold. This one I really would recommend using an iron for just because the nicer you get the folds, the better your pattern is going to turn out. So I'm going to start by pressing it and then folding it on the center front line like I've shown you here. And then I'm going to fold it into one fourths. So accordion fold it into fourths. So going back one way and then coming forward the other way. And then I'm gonna just make those sleeves go into that rectangle. Then I'm gonna go to the end at the hem of the t-shirt and I'm gonna start by folding a right triangle. And then I'm going to fold it under and then over and under and over and so forth. So it's an accordion fold of that triangle. And I start at the hem because it's easiest and I work my way to the collar and the sleeves because it's a little more tricky up at the collar and the sleeves. But I just work the excess fabric into that triangular shape and do my best. So then I'm gonna put my rubber bands on those 45 degree angles and I'm doubling up on rubber bands for this one because I'm using kind of thin rubber bands and I wanna make sure I get a good resist. 
So after I get my rubber bands on, it is ready to go into the vat and I'm just going to set it aside. Here it is, ready to go. Hey guys, just wanted to take a quick break from the video and ask you to hit the like button and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. Next is the circular pattern and I'm going to pull a peak with my finger and then I'm going to put a rubber band around wherever I want the uh, boundary of my circle and then I'm going to go ahead and tie off that circle with some string and again I'm just doing the front of the t-shirt so I'm going to just wrap my string around as tight as I can tight 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 the tighter I get it the better the resist and I'm going to do it a few times back and forth just to make sure that I get it super duper tight with my twine and I'm just using a kitchen twine here. You can find all of the supplies I'm using down in the description box. I always list all of the supplies I use in my videos in the description box. So once I get to the bottom of my circle, I tie it off with my string. And you can see here that's the back of the t-shirt and the sides of the t-shirt all loose. Okay, so here are my t-shirts. They're ready to go into the indigo vat. And in the next part of this video, we're going to go to my dyeing station and dip these. All right, so now I'm going to dip my t-shirts. I have a vat here. This is pre-reduced indigo. And indigo is a whole subject on its own. And if you're interested in learning more about indigo, I recommend that you check out my online indigo course. I teach over 20 folds and I talk about two different kinds of indigo vats in the class. You're able to download a handout with washing instructions and the different indigo recipes that you can use to achieve really beautiful results. So I'm going to put on my gloves and my mask and start to dip. All right, so this is pre-reduced indigo. I'm just gonna make sure I have all of the oxidized indigo off the top. I don't want this to get on my fabric. All right, and I am going to dry dip today. As you can see, I'm doing this in my garage for a couple reasons. It's pretty messy, so I have a lot of things set up to kind of clean up the mess easily. And also, I recommend doing this outside or in a place where you have a lot of ventilation because uh, indigo does have fumes. I'm going to be dipping each of these pieces multiple times to ensure that I get a good color. All right, I'm gonna move the bubbles to the side and cut them off. Okay, let's put this in. Let's put this one in again. All right, so there's some white inside, so that's good. I don't want it to be too dyed, but I want it to be a good combination. Okay, so let's see. Oh wow, that one's looking crazy. So let's dip this one again. Like I said before, I'm dipping each of these pieces multiple times to make sure that I get a nice dark blue or a medium dark blue. And you can dip your pieces as many times as you want. So I've sped up this part of the video and also edited out parts where it's just sitting in the vat for a few minutes at a time, just so you know, it's not this fast. This whole process took me quite a while. Also, you can sort of strategically dip your pieces. So here I'm just dipping the edges of my geometric piece just to make sure that the inside doesn't get too dyed. So now I'm going to open up my pieces. Oh, wow. Very nice. 
So that's going to turn nice and blue as soon as it oxidizes. I'm gonna hang it on my drying rack here. All right, so next let's do my wrapped lines. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Very cool. All right. All right, now let's try this one. Woo! Very cool. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna let these oxidize for a few minutes and then I'm gonna rinse them and wash them. Excuse the mess in my garage, but here they are. They're just hanging out on the drying rack and I'm gonna let them oxidize. They're turning blue before my eyes and then we're going to wash them, but they look awesome. So just a disclaimer, indigo is kind of a big mess. So just kind of be careful when you're working with it. Of course, I'm wearing gloves and this is my slop sink that I use for all kinds of dyeing. But I'm just going to rinse out my pieces until the water runs relatively clear. And then I'm going to wash them in the machine on hot with Synthropol to prevent the dye from re-dyeing all of the white parts of my pattern. And then I'm going to dry it on hot. And in the next part of the video, you're going to see the results. So after rinsing the shirts and then washing them in the machine, they turned out really pretty. I love indigo tie-dye. It's just such a beautiful art form. And there's just something so deep about the indigo that is really beautiful. Indigo will fade with time, just like your denim jeans will fade. Indigo is used to dye denim, so that is part of the magic of indigo. So just keep that in mind when you're washing your indigo pieces. If you're interested in a deep dive of indigo, I recommend you check out my indigo course where I go over 20 kinds of folds, talk all about the vat, give you multiple recipes for pre-reduced indigo, talk about wet dipping versus dry dipping, and laundry instructions. It's a great course if you wanna get started with indigo and you're confused about all the different recipes and different methods out there. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Onyx Art Studios. And if you make any of these shirts, be sure to tag me. I love to see what you guys are all up to. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.